Yes, people, what's happening? We're back with another episode of Let the Punk Talk. As always, I'm joined by Carl from Boxing Royalty. So we've got a couple things we want to discuss today. I'm going to hand you over to Carl and he can start the topics off for us. How you doing, mate? You all right? I'm very good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. I you've had a hard day. Yeah, every day is a hard day at the moment, mate. Every day is a hard day. <laughs> Two weeks, so it's going to be worth it. One more week. One more hard week. Exactly, mate. So we're yeah. almost there. Fuck shit up. Exactly. I thought, well, I better watch what I say. I don't want the uh, fanboys starting on me again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I think we go back, mate, because obviously we ain't spoke since Calm Brook, have we? Mm-hmm. Um, so just what's your general thoughts on that? How do you think the fight went? Was it as good as you thought? Could it have been better? Who looked good? Yeah, mate, I thought I thought Kel Brook looked absolutely incredible. Like he, he looked like he just rolled back the years. Like he looked in absolutely phenomenal shape like one of the best i've ever seen him in so you you could tell he was up for that fight like extremely up for it um yeah khan just looked in my opinion he just looked really sloppy like he was falling in with all of his shots like there was no balance there was like no control nothing and i think khan just i mean brooke was just patient picked him apart hurt him a lot and you know, and he and he got the job done, it, and I think it was good. It was it was a good fight for the for whilst it lasted. Personally, I know some people might think this is like a bit like oh no no no, but like I did think that it was stopped quite early. Like I didn't. I mean, he what? Don't get me wrong. He was taking a beating. Like he was taking a beating, but I didn't think he was ever in like any real danger or like he never really took any massive concussive shots he didn't get dropped like I thought the ref stopped it a bit early but at the same time I can see why and Khan didn't complain but me personally if if I got stopped like that I would have I would have said something but obviously it just shows that Khan basically had had enough like he had he'd taken a beating but yeah that was that was my um views on the fight what about yourself? I think I think Khan looked old. I think mm. from the moment he got caught in that first round, you see his legs went. And mm. give props to uh, Bomac. He took some. He did take some big shots that maybe a few years back would have wiped him clean out. So mm. it shows that he's been working on his legs. You know, his balance was there. He held. He ne- like you say, he never really looked bang in trouble. But there was a couple of times if Kel had put together a couple more shots, he'd have been out. But mm. there's something I watched. I rewatched the fight yesterday. And if you watch the ring walk, Car- uh, Brooke comes out and you can see game face, he's ready to go. But you look at Khan, he walked through like the, I don't know what it's called, like I'd call it a window type thing. Mm-hmm. And he literally went <sighs> like that. And I thought, you've just walked out in front of 20,000 people mm-hmm. and given the biggest, for me, I don't know if, if I'm talking rubbish here, but for me, that is, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I really don't fancy this. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the stoppage was all right. I think, you know, he, Khan, like Khan said, uh, like Brooke said, I would love to have been a Canelo stoppage. I would have loved yeah. to just put him, wipe him clean out. And I think he would have. But I also think that the referee is thinking, look, Khan's in danger of getting absolutely sparked at 35 years old. He could be banging trouble here. Mm. Um, it was sad to see because I know when we last did it, I, I went in on Khan quite a bit. And I, I, when I rewatched it, I thought, Christ, I, I was a bit over the top there. But you've got to give props to Khan. Do you know what I mean? He's mm. built a whole side of boxing that other people, like you look at the Azim brothers before the fight, they were banging on about Khan, Aki, mm. Fiaz. There's a lot of them that look up to Khan. And when he come through the Olympics, won the world title at 22 years old, he's had a fantastic career. And I, mm. I'm sure he will, but you know what Khan's like. He loves a pound note. And it wouldn't surprise me if you see him back again in a couple of years. Yeah. Do you think he'll retire? Yeah, I think he will. Just just from the performance side, and he, and he said at the end of it, he was like, the love for boxing is not there no more and all that. So, you know, when people kind of say that, like, it, it does think like, yeah, yeah, it's time to pack it in. And he put, I think he will, especially after that. It was quite, a, it was quite a, like, for him, it was quite a devastating loss because of, like, the rivalry between them both. And um, as well, like, talking about retirement, moving on to, like, Brooke, like, as well, I would actually love to see Brooke still go on because I've just thought he looked so great but at the same time just for him like what a way to just you know sign off and say say goodbye it's like 
almost a fairy tale ending, really, wasn't it, for him? So it would be nice to see him ret- both of them retire. But if Brook wants to fight on, I still think he's got like another a couple good fights left in him. No, I think he he proved he can still do it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a bit like Carl Frock. Do you think Carl Frock could have fought on? There was fights out there for him, yeah. but he he banged Groves out. He had that big fight, and he still managed to speak about it after the Calm Brook. I don't know if you noticed that, but they interviewed him, and he was like, "Well, when I fought George Groves in front of eight thousand people at Wembley, it's like yeah. shut up, mate. It's not about you." Um, <laughs> But yeah, I agree. Khan, that should be it. Not back in a ring. His chin's probably absolutely mullered. It needs a good bit of rest. With him, uh, with Kel Brook, if you'd have asked me before after the Crawford fight, I would have said, look, that's it. He don't, he shouldn't fight again. But on seeing that performance and how he looked, not just physically, but in the ring as well. Do you know what I mean? Like he looked fantastic, as you said. But the way he went in, mate, he was timing his shots well. Like you said, he didn't yeah. rush. I'd, I'd like to see him carry on. I think. Eddie Hearn done an interview and he said that he FaceTimed, Brooke FaceTimed him on the Sunday and said, like, look, if the money's right, I'll fight. I'm not interested in belts no more. But if someone was going to, if he get, he's, he'd probably get three million to fight Conor Ben. Mm. He ain't going to turn that down. Do you know what I mean? That's a that's a, a lot of money. <clears throat> think he, talking of Ben, you're, you're, you're a fanboy of Ben. <laughs> do you think, or how do you think the fight goes between Kel Brook and Conor Ben? I just think Brook absolutely smashes him. Like generally, I think he smashes him. Like I, I think like within six rounds as well. I just think he batters him. Like as I, as I keep saying, like I do think that Conor Brook Ben has come on a lot, but he's never done. He's never stepped in there or shown me anything to say that he's class. Like apart from his power, he's got. It looks. It does seem that he's got world class power. Um, he's stopping a lot of durable people very early and he absolutely sparked out Chris Algieri. Um, so apart from his power, he's not really shown me anything. But don't get me wrong, but Chris Algieri, it was actually, it was a good win. Like, it's a, it's a win that like, you know, someone for him, like to take on a former world champion and someone that's fought at a high level. Obviously, it was on the back end of his career, but it's still a good win. Um, but like, for the way that just people talk about him, He just has not shown me anything that suggests that he is like world level or moving in the direction to world level. He took the, he's taken a very easy route to get to where he was. Like he didn't come up through the Southern area, English, British, Commonwealth. You know, he, he fought a lot of half decent, very low ranked, like British level fighters and then went down the the international routes, which, uh, in my opinion, are extremely easy belts to pick up. They're much easier than, even though they're way more prestigious in boxing terms, but they are way easier to pick up than the Southern area, the English and the British and so on, because you can just get, you can literally just get matched with anyone, you know, and it doesn't really matter what their record is or how good they are, what level they fought at. You can just get matched with literally anyone and, yeah, I just I just think they they're kind of like really like paper belts, and that's the route he decided to take. And like the thing is, I was actually going to put something up, um, but I just couldn't really be bothered for it. But I was actually going to put something up like why people should respect Chris Eubank more than they should respect Conor Ben, and like people will be like, oh, like, but Chris Eubank you know, whatever, they just talk some shit and they'd be like, well, Conor Ben's only 24 and all this shit. By the time Chris Eubank was 24, he had he had a massive fucking, I think, British title fight with Billy Joe Saunders, two undefeated fighters. You know, Billy Joe was a former um, bronze medalist at the Olympics, you know, like 15 or 13 and 0 at the time. Eubank had a roundabout, a very similar um, resume and you know so on and that was his like massive big fight at 24 I mean he lost it quite clearly in my eyes but still it was a massive step up and then by the time he was 26 he had been in with um Nick Blackwell he won the British title he had beat Gary Spike O'Sullivan he he um he uh he beat that Tom Tom whatever something I can't remember his name who was a prize he won prize fighter who was also undefeated you know, he had big fights and he's still having big fights. And every time Chris Eubank says he's going to fight someone, minus Triple G, but I think that was more his dad's fault than his fault. Chris Eubank's always stepped up to the plate and he's got some big wins on his resume, like Liam Williams being the biggest because 
you could say James the girl's the biggest name, but the girl was past it and so on and so forth. But having said that again, the girl was world champion. He was IBF world champion, but vacated it for, for whatever reason. So he was a legit world champion at the time when Chris Eubank actually beat him. So, you know, there, there's way more reasons why we should admire Chris Eubank than Conor Ben. But because Chris Eubank is the villain, no one <laughs> likes him, but the Eubank's the good guy. I mean, Ben's the good guy, so everyone loves Ben, When and Ben's done nothing, in my opinion. Who who do you think now, in 10 years' time, we're going to look back on and say had the better career? Who's going to go further, would you say? This is the thing, again, like, obviously Chris Eubank's way ahead of his career, but he's had an absolutely incredible career already. He's fought on some elite fighters like Billy Joe and Groves. Of course, he's come up way short, but he fought them. He's got really good wins on his record. A lot of them, okay, yeah, they are. They were past it, like Arthur Abraham and James DeGale. Um, But then he's also got Liam Williams on there. He's got Nick Blackwell. I mean, th these ain't like world-class names, but they're good. They're good That's names good. to have, at, especially at the time in his career when he had them. Um, Gary Spiker Sullivan got actually ended up getting to quite a high level, just below world level he got to. So that was another good win. And he fought him like when he was like probably in his prime and so on and so forth. And like there's still, you know, there's still big fights out there, especially coming off the Williams thing. There's still big fights out there for him. But the thing is with Connor with Connor Ben now, like the chances of Connor Ben becoming a world champion are probably very high because he's in that position now where he's probably going to get a vacant title shot against someone who we've never heard of and will probably knock him out. And he'll probably defend it a couple of times, like three, four, five times against people we've never heard of. And and because he's so young, he's probably going to end up being a multiple world champion and never really fighting anyone. And every time he steps up, you know, he's going to, he's probably going to lose in, in my opinion. But until until their, their careers have ended, we can't really say much. But I, I would actually really like to think that Chris Eubank would retire the more, like, to boxing fans, he would have the better resume at, by the end of their careers, I would like to think. Yeah, I think it's... I mean, I'm not Eubank's biggest fan, but you can't take anything away from him. I think you're right. I think his dad's held him back a lot. You know, Eddie Hearns openly said, like, some of the fights we've put out there, Chris has agreed to. And then when it's come to the final negotiations, he's like, I want 10 grand more because I'm in the away dressing room. It's like, well, hold up, you're fighting GGG for the world title, mate. You're, you're not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, so do you think that Eubank versus Ben, uh, not Eubank, Ben, Eubank versus Brooke is a better fight? Would you like to see that? Yeah, but I don't think it will happen. I don't. So Eubank versus Brooke. Yeah, Eubank, Brooke. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'd like to see that. I think that's a great fight. I, you think he's safe for Brooke, though? No, no. I was just literally just going to say, I think Eubank would be way too big and way too strong. But I mm. still think it would be a great fight. Um, I I think that fight's way more likely to happen than Brooke versus um, Ben, especially after Brooke's performance. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's more likely. I think if the British fans want to hold on to something, they should really hold on to the Eubank fight instead of the Ben fight. Yeah, I mean... Eddie Hearn's come out this week. I watched these, obviously, the Akoli fight week. They're fighting Sunday, aren't they? And he said, like, look, we've, we've not agreed, but, you know, Kel has basically said, look, if the price is right, I'll fight. Do you know what I mean? But I don't, I don't, thing is, this is where it's silly because the whole reason behind Kel Brook's problems, like we said about before, are through stepping up to fight GGG. Mm. You know what I mean? He, he was in that fight, his eye socket got smashed to pieces. And like we said, we don't know where he'd be. So I, I can't see him going up from 149, was it he thought that, to 160. You know, Eubank isn't going to make 155. That that just isn't going to happen. Or he isn't willing to make that. So can you see Kel Brook stepping up, what's that, two weights, three weights, is it? To I, I just can't see it. I think, I, I think we will see the Ben fight. And I think if Ben wins, because they're announcing Ben's fight on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I know who it is, but I cannot remember his name. Yeah. It's not not a big name. He's had he, he's been in with his last fight. I think was against um, I can't remember. But it got stopped on a cut in the first round, mm. but that's like the biggest name. But I, I rate Ben. I think his power is good. But yeah, I do think you're right. I mean, I know that Frank Warren stopped the Chris Jenkins fight. That was meant to happen for the British, 
and he just weren't wouldn't allow it at the first fight camp. Well, I read that. I don't I don't know that personally, obviously. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think I think he'll probably get a world title shot by the end of next year. This year, yeah. kind of then. If he win, if he does win this fight and then beats Kell Brook, because I think the Kell Brook fight will be a final eliminator if it is. Mm. Yeah. I can't see Kell Brook saying, "Yeah, I'll just fight him for two million. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, oh, you, you never know, do you? This is the thing when they get to that age. Like he's he's openly said it on telly. If the millions are right, I'll fight. Mm. Is that a good attitude to have? I mean, with the problems he's got, do you think if, if you're in Kell Brook's shoes now, are you going look? Like you said, I've, st- I've beaten a guy that I've hated for 15 years. I'm done. Or would you carry on for the money? Yeah, that, this is the thing. Like, I always think that when people kind of just carry on for the money, it's always it's kind of the wrong reason. I mean, it, Brooks got to be a multi-millionaire now. So I don't think he's ever going to want for anything. And I don't think his kids will probably ever want for anything, you know. So I don't really think he needs the money. So I don't really think he needs to fight for the money. And and you know we we've literally just seen what can happen if he's up for a fight and how good he can still be and that's the kind of that's how i want to remember brook like going out like that and like if we if i ever see him in a ring again i want to see that brook again i don't want to just see some half arsed kel brook come in for a paycheck like so the court fight yeah yeah so if that's if that's the case i'd like to say you know goodbye Brooke you know you've had an amazing career like thanks for the memories kind of thing but yeah I wouldn't want to see him in the, in a ring again unless he was up for a fight he Kel Brooks got to be up there in our lifetime you think in the last sort of 10 years we've been watching boxing he's got to be up there as one of the British greats in the last 10 years yeah I, I, I thought he was an elite I'd still well not still think but he was an elite when he was in his prime I just yeah. think he got very unlucky yeah, I mean, we keep going back to it, but it was that silly fight. Do you think if he could go back, he wouldn't have stepped in against GGG? Or do you think he'd still take the six, seven million he got and take uh, the injury? He still would have took it. Yeah, because there's, there's talk about, because obviously Crawford is potentially moving weights. Mm. There's talk about if he wins, he could fight Spence again. Like, that is just ridiculous. <laughs> like That's like Amir Khan getting in with Canelo again. It's, it's, mm. you, you know how it's going to end. But yeah, I, I hope he retires on that. I, mm. I think he, he'd, be, he'd be the right decision to do. You know, I say he's got a young family. He's, he's multi millionaire, must be. You think from them two, the, the Golovkin and the uh, Spence fight, he must have got mm. 10, 15 million for both. Mm. Probably a couple of million just for fighting Khan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's He's had a life. He, he's been to Fort Ventura every six months for training camps. Now it's the time yeah. to just pack it. Because he don't live the life either, does he? Like He openly admits that. Oh, yeah. He gets massive when he, he's yeah. out of camp. And that's that. That's another thing that ain't healthy. I mean, I was talking. I think was it you I was talking to about yesterday. I don't know if it was you, or I think it might have been Will. We were saying about like how yeah. fights you see them coming down in camp because mm. they were all talking about how they've got like a couple of pounds to lose here and there, and it's easy to do. But just imagine that thought, like obviously being eight weeks out and knowing you've got to lose like eight, I don't know how it works. Like, what's the average weight someone's got to lose from start to the finish of camp? Do you know? Is it what's it? Eight I, think, I don't really think there's an average, mate. Like everyone's just different. Like, I see. You know, for instance, obviously you could take Ricky Hatton into consideration, where right? yeah, like, and then you could take just any, like, pretty much anyone else. That like, everyone's just different, man, in it. So I don't really think there's an average. What do you What do you weigh in at the start of camp? Uh, well, the last couple of years I've been actually really disciplined. Like, I didn't go over fifty seven after my last fight. I went up to sixty, but before I was going up to like sixty five, and I was cutting down to fifty two. Which is quite, it's quite a lot. Like, yeah, that is. Yeah, do you, but you said you, 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 you're right with cutting weight. Yeah, yeah, I've always been, I've always been good. But I've just, I've, well, obviously, I see you train yesterday, and I, I don't know how, how you do it. Honestly, it's just, it's, you do eight round sparring, and then you're on the bag for two minutes. Kieran's got you jumping down doing burpees. I'm sat yeah. on the ring. I'm thinking, yeah. Jesus, wet. I'm sweating watching. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Talking of this weekend, we'll, we'll quickly jump on to Akoli. Are you, are you watching that fight on Sunday? Man, I, I generally didn't even know it was happening until you <laughs> just said it. Like, I mean, I knew he had a fight lined up, but I didn't know when it was. Like, It's not really been promoted that well, is it? Like, it's um, on the zone, isn't it? Sunday yeah. night, he's fighting that Cizlac, C- or whatever his name is. C- I mean, Slack. I tune in. If I'm it's a good little card, to be fair. You've got uh, Fowler stepping up to middleweight. 
I know yeah. your views on stepping up after a loss. Mm. You've got um, John Hedges is on the card. Um, there's a couple of big fights. Uh, and now I can't remember, so we'll move on. But, yeah, I hope Akoli knocks him out. There's talk of him moving straight up to heavyweight afterwards, isn't there? Yeah, he's been saying that for a while, hasn't he? He's Well, Breedis is on the broadcast team because, obviously, he called Breedis out. Mm. And Breedis like, was like, yeah, we'll do it. And then, like, nothing ever got said. So, do, 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 do you rate Akoli? Just quickly, do, do you rate him? Mate, do you know what? Like, I generally think he's, like, the Dante Wilder of the cruiserweights, like, but I just I I could not never see anyone beating him at cruiserweight. He's just so he's just such a force. Like he's so big, so strong, and has like freakish power for a cruiserweight. And like to be honest, under Shane McGuigan, he he's actually come on a lot. Like he actually looks like he can box now. But before he would like I would have compared him to someone like Dante Wilder. He had that like wild nurse like that. You know that long gangly nurse kind of thing, but like mm. he's he's actually come a long way under thingy. But yeah, I just think at cruiserweight he has the potential to unify that division. I mean, at heavyweight, I still think he'd it probably do bits, but mm. I just think it'd be a bit different. I just I I couldn't see anyone beating him. I just think he's way too big and way too strong for everyone at cruiserweight. Yeah, that's part of the reason I think they, no one wants to fight him. He said today, then he said, if I can't unify, I'm stepping up. And he said that he'd like to fight Ariola in his first fight. Be interesting. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't really rate Ariola, but he's big. Do you know what I mean? So it'd be a big test to move up. But obviously, he wouldn't fight Joshua. So how would you see him faring against someone like Joyce? I think Joyce would probably. I, I think. No, I don't know. That would be a good fight. You know, that would be a good fight because Joyce, again, yeah. I get. I don't really rate Joyce's boxing ability. I would think he's he's probably the slowest fighter I've ever seen, and that's mm-hmm. not even an exaggeration. He's incredibly slow, but he's so relentless and so physically strong that, like, and obviously hits pretty hard as well. That no one can just be able to seem to deal with it over twelve rounds. So he's just got that kind of like mad engine and like it just keep coming forward so it's an interesting it would be an interesting fight actually it'd be a good one to watch i mean I've, i reckon i've spoke to five people in boxing mm. that have sparred at heavyweight and every single person i speak to who's sparred joe joyce say he's the toughest person they've ever been in the ring with it's mad but apparently he's been hit like people have hit him with their best shot and he has just walked through it you look at the bar the bar so called him clean yeah. yeah, he caught him square on the chin. He was like a term. He just mm, carried on walking towards him. <laughs> you must be up against him and you must think like, I am not getting this man out of here. Mm. I can't outbox him because he just walks at me. So I'd be doing circles of the ring the whole time, throwing the odd jab. It's, it, that's what I was thinking about earlier. Him against um, Joyce Akoli would be very interesting. Because it would be the question of, could Akoli get to him? Can he take the uh, the uh, Joyce's power? Do you know what I mean? Can Joyce take a Coley's power? There's so many questions in that fight. Mm. But I think Joyce is at an age now where he's, what is he, 34? He he isn't going to get older fight. than that. He might be 36, but he's, he's yeah. WBO mandatory. Mm. So that might be a fight you see, because you never know. If, if Usyk can't fight, does he look, Does he have to drop his belt? So are they going to make him do that? And then would they make Joshua versus Joyce? Do you know what I mean? There's so many questions. Again, Joshua Joyce, you're a Joshua fanboy again. What do you think yes. of that? I would like to think that Joshua would like this is the thing, I just don't really rate Joyce's like technical ability. But as I just made the other points, it just makes him such like a force. Mm. But I think like Joshua's been proven to go 12 rounds a couple times and he's sharp, he, he's way faster than that. I mean, he's incredibly fast compared to Joyce. Like, and he and he's and he's very strong in his own right. So I think I don't know that one could be a bit of like I would go towards Joshua on that one. Mm. Mm. That's fair enough. I'm, I'm I am looking forward to it. You think you got what we're about to talk about in a minute tomorrow night, Josh Taylor, which I think will be a, a, a much, I think that's gonna be a much better fight than people are giving credit for. But before we jump on that, have you seen the announcement today? <clears throat> Fury White done. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, done deal. Yeah. 
What, what's uh, I think I know what you're going to say, but how does that fight go? I think Fury batters him, to be honest. Like, so a lot of people, I've been hearing a lot of people like, yeah, Dylan White's going to give him the most trouble, like this, that. I don't have to, personally, I believe that. I don't, I don't, I just, I just, I can't see, I just can't see anyone even troubling Fury. I really can't, like, I just. I just feel like Fury's been in there with hun not hundreds, but he's been in there with a lot of Dylan White's. Like, I just can't really see him troubling him. I think Dylan White will give it a good go, and it'll probably be an entertaining fight. But I just can't see Fury losing that. I don't know why I said the same to Tom the other night. I I just have this feeling that Dylan White's going to do it. I don't know why. Don't ask me why, because I look like a prick. But <clears> I just I just think he's going to beat him. I don't know. Like I keep saying, I don't know why. But you know when you just have this feeling? I had this feeling with Ruiz and Joshua. That was different because it was halfway through camp and whatnot. But I've just got this feeling that Dylan White, he ain't going to knock him out. I don't know if he's going to knock him out. Joey. How's it going to end? It's, it's a fight that you don't know because Dylan White has proven that he hasn't got the greatest chin in the world. Mm. I mean, he got flopped by Povetkin for being sloppy. If yeah. there were 15 more seconds in the Parker fight, he would have been sparked. Joshua knocked him clean out. Fury's going to just go in with an uppercut because that's the punch that's proven. Dip in and hit him. Mm. Fury ain't going to have to dip because he's, talk, he's just going to go up straight up through the middle. But Dylan White's got a bastard of a left hand. He comes out, when he wraps that left hook, I just don't know. I, I, I think it, this could be the fight where he gets troubled. I, I could be completely wrong. I could come back on here on April the 24th and say, Jesus, 30 seconds, he got knocked out. Yeah. But I don't think, I, if Dylan White loses that, I don't think you'll see Dylan again. Yeah, probably not. Because he's, he's waited so long. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But one thing that is interesting for me is this silent treatment he's given. You've seen that? Yeah. Mm. that that's going to get in Fury's head. <laughs> because Fury's so out there. Do you know, he's always, you see him on the day of the video, your little bum, your doss, or whatever he says, like, I love Fury. But I, I think it's very clever moves. I think Dylan White's just got to stay quiet, turn up to the press conference, go back to Portugal. Do you know, there was a big thing made that he said, I don't want to come to the press conference to risk anything like COVID wise. Mm. I would rather come to London when the fight's on. But I, I just think he's got to stay, stay out of the way, do his duties, you know, press conference weigh-ins. They'll probably do like, a, well, I don't think they'll do a worldwide tour, but they might do one like in Manchester, one in London. Uh, and I just think he's, this is it. He's got to think in his head, I either win or I don't box again. But mm. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see him win. I would like to see him win. As much as he's a bit of a live wire like Chisora, I would like to see him get his hands on that belt, even if he got flopped in the rematch. I think he does. He's done, he, He's got a very good record, Dillian White. He's never shied away from anyone. Yeah. I, I rate him. I like Dillian White a lot. I didn't like him at first, but hmm. that's because I'm a big AJ fan, and he was obviously threatening AJ's record when he was coming through. Yeah. But, you know, did you watch the Lucas Brown fight with Dillian White? I see the highlights of it. Oh, that was brutal. Yeah, that, was, I felt sick that, watching that fight. That yeah. fight and Ted Cheeseman when he lost in the European title. Do you remember against Sergio Garcia? Mm. That's the two most uncomfortable I've ever been watching boxing. Oh, really? Oh, I felt sick, mate. The amount of blood. When he knocked Lucas Brown out, that was disgusting. And Ted Cheeseman didn't have a nose. It looked like a bus stop because <laughs> he was getting hit that much. Mm. But anyway, so Taylor, Catrell, yeah. go for it. Tell me. Talk to me. But obviously, before we go into that, just like two mentions on the on the card. There's a uh, one female fighter on that card, yeah, and I, I see her because she's a she's a Wasserman fighter, and she was on the same card as Razor Ali, my gym mate. Uh, her name's Ebony Jones. She looks fucking class. Like yeah, when I see yeah, her, maybe. I see you. She looked class. So like. She's just like an honourable mention. Like, just keep an eye out for her. Because I think she go far. And then another fight that I'm really interested in is that um, I'll get onto why it interests me. Is that Nick Nick Campbell versus Jane McFarlane? That's I think that would be a good fight for two reasons. One, I really like that Jane uh, Jane McFarlane. I just think he's a, he's a cool cat. Like I really like I, I like him. Like, I've got him on Insta and like he follows me and like exchange a couple messages sometimes. He just he just seems like that kind of guy that I would really get on with. We seem like Yeah, very, you seem very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. I do think yeah. I think when I was looking at his profile, I did think of you actually. And like another reason I just like it is because obviously 
with my career, like I was involved in the in the first ever Southern Area title at my weight class, and uh, still is the only fight for the Southern Area title that took place. Really, what, there's only ever been one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be a part of the second as well. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's mad. Yeah, yeah. So like, obviously, that Jay McFarland, he was the first ever um, Scottish cruiserweight champion, and there hasn't been a fight since then. And now he's gonna, he could potentially be the first um, Scottish heavyweight champion in 51 years. Like the, the belt hasn't been fought for in 51 years, the heavyweight title. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a, it's a really prestigious history making fight for both of them. So, and it would be, it would really be good for Jay McFarlane to win that. It would be something to really like tell his kids about. You know, I was the first ever like cruiserweight Scottish fight, and then a couple of years later, the first ever. Scottish heavyweight champion in, in 50 years, you know, on, on this card and so on and so forth. So that's a real interesting fight. And I think it's a fight he can actually really win because I've watched that Nick Blackwell and he's very like head in the air, very stiff, like robotic. And I just think that Jay McFarlane has got that kind of like, if he, the Jay McFarlane turns up that he can be, he's got a very awkward, elusive style and he's quite fast for a big man as well. Yeah, he is, yeah. So, I think he he can he can uh, do that. I really do. Yeah, I agree. I I'm probably going to be the most hated person on YouTube, but I really don't rate that Nick Campbell. I've mm. been I watched his last fight. I can't remember the guy's name, but he fought that guy Johnny Fisher fought him on his debut, and he drops down to cruiserweight. The guy Mark Little's fighting fought him in his last fight as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. I'll get it. Um, and he it was a stoppage. But he's a journeyman. He stopped the journeyman. But, mate, it was awful. It, but, but that was because he was banging trouble. He was losing the fight. Um, I have seen things about Jay McFarlane spent, like, three, the last three days in the pub or something stupid. I don't know how true that is. That might just be banter. But I really like him. I remember when he was in Boxer. And did you mm. see him today at the weigh-in? He come in with his body yeah, all painted. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I agree with you. I, I really – I think he's, he's got a lot of power. Mm. He's got a quick right hand as well. You see him in the workout yesterday over the top. Like a bloody football celebration, is that yeah. over? Bang! So I hope he does it. But yeah, that and that Ebony Jones, mm. she um she was in the army. Did you know that? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, she was in the army. So if you look, I think it's on her leg. She's got the tattoo of the regiment she was in. Oh wow! And, uh, I remember her debut last year. She just kept mm. coming forward, didn't she? She yeah. uh, very unlucky not to. Did she stop the girl or not? Or she was very unlucky well, not to. I think I the points. But that's another thing. Like you look at women's boxing, she could win. She could fight tomorrow, win, fight again in say what are we now March, say May, win. She could be in a world title fight by yeah. Christmas. Yeah. This is me. Me yeah. and Kieran said about it yesterday. Look, he was talking. They were talking about one of the girls that will trains, and he said like she could win on the. I think she's fighting on like the fifth. Mm. Win again in June, and she she get a world title shot against a nobody in November. Mm. No. Do you know what I mean? You look at. We go back to last week. Uh, Natasha Jonas over the moon for her, but who the fuck was that opponent she fought? Mm. The stoppage was early. That was a joke of a stoppage, and she—I don't think she threw a shot. But mm. I'm happy for Natasha Jonas. She, she, mm. It would have been unfair if she didn't win a world title in her career because I think she beat mm. Terry Arthur. So yeah, I did as well. I'm looking forward to both shows tomorrow night and uh, Sunday's. Mm. Josh yeah. Taylor. Yeah, so I—I I think. It's quite an easy fight for him, to be honest. I, do you know what it is? I just, I think Josh Taylor's top five pound for pound. Like, I really do. I just, and the way he's done it as well is like no one else, you know? Like, he took the big fights. And I think on his record, it's something ridiculous. His last six fights have all been undefeated fighters. And he's fighting another undefeated fighter. And the fight before the undefeated fighters was... um Hostile. Yeah, and he had only lost one fight to Terence Crawford. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's unbelievable. And he's done everything. Like, he won the Super Six. He beat all the undefeated fighters in that. He unified the division. He just, I just, just like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think Jack Cart, um, Cart, Cartwell, Cart, 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 yeah, is good. Like, I think he's really good. But he's not on Josh Taylor's level. Not, he's just not, nowhere near. Not even close. Like, and I just think it's I just think it's like what Josh Taylor said. If you if you want to box me, it's it's a shutout points win for me. If you want to fight me, it's not gonna be it's gonna be an early night. Like I whatever whatever Jack does, I just don't, I can't see Josh losing. I can barely see him losing a round. 
Yeah, I agree. I think Jack is a great fighter, but it's one of them stories of just the wrong champion at the wrong time. Do you know what I mean? There's nine t- You look at, say, the last five champions, they've probably beat two or three of them. Mm. But with Taylor, I just think, like you said, Taylor is incredible. I The only person I put above Taylor in pound-for-pound pound rankings, I said this to you and Tom before, was Crawford. Mm. I go Crawford, uh, Taylor, Usyk. They're my top three, followed by Canelo and Fury. Hmm. I just think Josh Taylor is incredible. 18 fights. And like you said, his last six opponents have got a record of 150 and one. Do you know what I mean? That's just outrageous. Like the Baranchik fight in the semi final. Hmm. Right? He, he stood there and boxed him for 12 rounds. I think the score covers like nine, three in rounds. You, hmm. He's done that to Baranchik. And then Progre, like absolute war. Like he did not need to get involved in them last four rounds. But he's Scottish, and they all probably think, "Fuck it!" And he just went for it. Do you know what I mean? I just, I, I, I think. Do you think he beats Crawford if they were to step up? I don't know. It's a fight. It'd be a great fight. I'd like to see it. It'd be a good I, I could, you could, could, just couldn't pick a winner. I don't think that would be an absolute war. So, who? So how does Jack win this fight? At Jack Josh. I just think he does it. From, what he does is all the time, like. I just think he wins it from being Josh Taylor, like the elite fighter that we all know. You know, I just, yeah, I just can. I do, I, there's no way. There's not a doubt. There's not one doubt in my mind that Josh Taylor will lose that fight. The only little, not I wouldn't call it a doubt, but the only little thing tinkering in my mind is how long Catterall's waited for it. But mm. one thing that Catterall's let himself down on is, I don't know, did you watch The Gloves Are Off? Yeah. Like he stayed calm and cool through all that. Like Josh was trying to rally him up mm. and he didn't really get involved. A couple of times he like said something. And then even at the press conference the other day, you know, Taylor called him. It was either a, he said like a clown. It was a clown or a cunt. I don't know what he said. <laughs> yeah. Did you know what? He, yeah. And still then Jack was like, all right, mate, chill out. Yeah. And then he got all the way to the way in today and he fucking grabbed Taylor by the throat, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. I think that was a very bad move. But did you see Jamie Moore in the background was stood there like that, just grinning? <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, if you look, if you go on Jamie Moore's Instagram, it's on his story. Like he showed, there's an angle of him holding him by the throat, and Jamie Moore's just stood mm. there like that, smiling. <laughs> but I think he's probably pissed Josh Taylor off right at the worst time. You've just weighed mm. in, you're about to rehydrate, and you grab him by the throat. You grab him by the throat at the gloves are off or something when he's still trying mm. to make weight. You know, you don't do it when he's about to drink a load of water and eat a load of food. Yeah. I personally, my prediction, I was one off with Khan. Um, I'm going to say Taylor stops him in the eighth round. And I think it's going to be a heavy stoppage. Mm. I reckon um, it could be earlier. I reckon within six. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hope, hopefully, I mean, it is England versus Scotland, but I'm a big Josh Taylor fan. I like him a lot. I think right. he's um, world class. Anyone else on that undercard? Or was that what we just spoke about, Ebony? I, mean, I think there are. There's uh that Paddy Donovan's on the on the card as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's beat uh he beat Eric Mike. Donovan Paddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's on there and uh he beat my he beat one of my friends, Jamani Camaro as well. So like uh, yeah, I rate I rate him a lot. But he's not I don't think he's in there with anyone special like he should, you know. I, know. I think he's a Costa Costa Rican or something like that. He's yeah. the away fighter, isn't he? Hmm. I don't get how I don't think that other guy's signed by Sky though, so that's a bit mad that. <laughs> but, no, I mean. but yeah, so, um, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say I don't think there's anyone else on there that's like worth mentioning. No. No, you're thinking of, you said Eric. Did you say Eric? Yeah, that is Eric, isn't it? No, no, I'm talking about Paddy Donovan. Who's Eric Donovan fighting then? Eric So this camera's backwards, isn't it? So that's who I'm talking about. Oh, you were right. I'll let you off. Talking about, yeah, yeah. Eric What's Donovan it? is fighting this week. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It there. Oh, there's both of them on the card. Yeah, yeah, they're both. Oh, I'll there. let you off. Yeah. I thought you was just being a bit like Irish and. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, Paddy. Paddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. You call Kieran Paddy when you forget his name. Hey, Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. What have you? Yeah, watch out for that Paddy. He's he's class, man. Is he? What's his record? Let's say seven and zero. Oh. Seven and zero, oh, five stoppages. Jeez, what way is he? At? Wait, what wait? I think he's Walter. I think it's a dangerous division, isn't it? They're, they're if you look at them, they look small, but they're hard hitters, aren't they? That that weight upwards, 
you know, you're, you're always in for a good night. There's a couple of welterweight fights on your card, isn't there? But yeah, yeah, Jack Newham is one I can remember. And I think yes. there might be another one somewhere on there. But yeah, yeah Jack... shout out to Jack. I'm looking forward to watching him. A nice yeah, kid. Jack. I don't know how old is he. How old is Jack? 24, 25? Yeah, I think 25, I think. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing him in the ring. Obviously, I did his shirts for him, so hmm. be nice to meet him. Yeah, but good lad, good lad. Two weeks tomorrow, then. Indeed, mate. Indeed. How long's camp been going on now? What six weeks? Eight weeks? Yeah, yeah six. Crazy times. What's the What's the first thing you're uh, looking forward to? Getting that belt and getting home, or are you going out? No, nah, I think probably go to the pub like across the road just to socialise with everyone, and then I just want to come straight home, mate. Just straight home and like enjoy my night eat some food and like you know drink some monsters <laughs> <laughs> are you not are you not drinking monsters at the minute now then i haven't had one for a while mate are you what is that because you just can't or no i can't so actually tell i think i had one yesterday but that was the first <laughs> that's one. wild for you <laughs> that, that's a long time mate. <laughs> like, no like that was the first one in a while no like, i i can do it like it doesn't affect you now yeah, I, I can, but I'm just choosing not to at the moment. Like, not that it would make a difference. Like, no, I suppose they don't really affect you, do they? So, on the day of the fight, do you just stick to water? When I'm actually fighting? No, like on the not not when you're fighting. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah, day. yeah, I know what you like on the actual day. Like, when yeah, I'm fight, yeah. No, I could I could have a fizzy drink if I wanted, or like, um, or like juice or something. You know, like. I wouldn't go mad with it. Like, I wouldn't have like four monsters beforehand or something. <laughs> like, but like, you know what I mean? I love like one, maybe. Like, yeah. That's mad, isn't it? Did you see what uh, Kieran labelled this podcast as yesterday? No, what did he say? Did you hear it? Uh, well, when I, went, when I was in the car, he was like, tell the punk to shut up, don't they? Yeah, he's like, tell the punk to fucking shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, he's always wearing pink for Christ's sake. <laughs> He's funny. I do. I, I speak spoke to him quite a bit yesterday. Obviously, when you was warming up, yeah, you saying about you know how excited he is for you to uh, mm. get, get the champion. He's my yeah, champion. That was me. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, mate. So you you're not in the gym tomorrow, Saturday? Yeah, not in the gym tomorrow. Just just track, track oh. and chill out, mate. It makes me shiver when you talk about that track. Are you still doing that same thing? Yeah, or has it gone up a bit more? Yeah. Well, it'd be when I do it again. Yeah, it'd be it'd probably be like six seven or eight sprints any coffee drinkers this week any what coffee drinkers oh yeah mate they're always there really yeah but i've been going quite late now i've been going well not that late but like five in the evening but by that time it starts to get dark so mm. there's not really a lot i mean don't get me wrong you're always going to get the odd idiot there but like <laughs> there's hardly there's hardly anyone there at that time so it's quite peaceful when i've just i've come to kind of really enjoy it so i just always go at five in the evening now just to avoid everyone how what's it what does that equivalent like what does the that whole distance you run do you know what that equals to as a total i think four is okay four is two mile because um a mile is uh 1600 meters so it's two eight two eight hundreds in it so you do four you do um you do Two eight hundred is a mile, and then oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, so if you'd done eight, you'd have run four miles. Mm. Oh, that's, that just runs so long. That's like halfway to your house from me. Yeah, I think. I don't know. It might be. Mm. Anything else, mate? We'll be done forty-five minutes. Yeah, just one quick shout out quickly. Hold on, let me just get it up. Should have had this up already. But yeah, just a quick shout out to this show, Young Lions, Tony Pills, who was my second in his corner in my corner in my last fight, and he's going to be in my corner again. He's got his second show coming up called The Young Lions 2.0. I think it's down in Watford. Um, yeah, it's got some great prospects on there. Tacey Galahar, who I've sparred, who's like a young female fighter coming up. Frankie Story on there. And I've heard about him when we was down your gym. Is he the guy with the blonde hair? Yeah, yeah, good fight. Yeah, Kieran was saying he was good. Yeah, he is good. He's very good. And, yeah, just loads of other good pro – oh, they've got that – I can't remember his last name, but a guy called Carl, like, really good, signed by um, MTK. I think he's 4-0 and at the moment. Uh, 
he is class. I think he's a middleweight. He's, he's um, got a twin brother as well, also signed by um, MTK. So they're like the twin, but he's he's got it. But when yeah, then? when that shows tomorrow. Um, so yeah, okay. yeah, giving it a shout out. I'm actually doing the media for the show as well, so I'm doing the write up on the show and all that. So I'll be down there. So yeah, man, just come along, support the show, support my 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 pug gym mates, and yeah, it should be a really good night. Grab a picture with a punk kid. Exactly. We might call you a dick, but I'm sure. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, hopefully that show goes well. All the best. Hopefully your your uh, gym mates come out well, knocking out people or just winning. It's not all about the knockout, but it will be on March the 12th. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah, mate, I'm all done. I'm happy with that, if you're happy. Yeah, I'm happy with that, mate. So, peace, people, and we'll see you next week for another episode of Let the Punk Talk. Bosh.